welcome back to the channel thank you for tuning in as always and a little bit of a change of delivery today I'm gonna do my introductory video about my Fiesta RS Turbo um, yes I fully appreciate it was born an XR2i I bought it an XR2i but in my mid 20s I was lucky enough to come across an RS Turbo engine so at that age it'd be rude not to convert it anyway so this is going to be an introduction and i'm going to shoot a series of videos about the fiesta so let's just get the tripod so i know where i stand let's try and not look into the sun so this one's going to be an intro what it was like when i first bought it um how long i've had it which is an epic amount of time and how I modded it when I first had it, when it was an XR2i. And it had extensive mods back in the day, back in the max power day. Let's just get the tripod lowered. So, I bought this car just before my 20th birthday. So, still a teenager. And... I don't really know why I specifically wanted an XR2i. There was one down the road, a dealership near my parents' house. Um, it was a J-plate, so almost brand spanking new, sat on the forecourt in white, I believe, and it looked lovely. I've never had a view to having an RS Turbo at that age. There was no way that I could insure one, so the option for me was an XR2i and I, at that time I was driving a Ford Escort Mark IV XR3i so we had Fords in the family my stepdad was a mechanic and he was into his Fords and obviously coming from Clacton there was quite a boy racer scene shall we say that was quite prevalent in my growing up. So, Fords, RSs, XRs, Capri, 2.8 injection, Cosworths, all that sort of thing, they were your go-to. Obviously, mates of mine had Pug 19 GTIs, Metro Turbos, Uno Turbo IE, Renault 5 GT Turbo, all wonderful cars, nice and quick. Mate of mine had a Mark IV RS Turbo, good friend of mine that I went to college with, and that was particularly nice. Um, but I wanted an XR2i. Anyway, so I test drove one that unfortunately got away from me, that was white, and then went and looked at this one. Um, it was high mileage, but I think it was 3,300 quid. And I went along with my stepdad, and he said, as I say, he's a mechanic. He said, everything seems all right. It needs valve stem oil seals because it's a bit smoky on startup. Apart from that, it seemed all right. As I say, I think it had done 90,000. So I bought it without hesitation. And uh, it was in all right, Nick. It, all my friends used to call it the land crab on the, on the strip because standard XR2i, it was sitting really high and it did look funny. So of course then fast forward to getting through my apprenticeship in print and suddenly having a little bit of money then started modifying it so it had full magnex exhaust super chip something called an efi power boost valve which used to be advertised in the back of max power had one of those it had a kent cam fast road cam and the mandatory K&N 57i. And it went all right. It went all right. The mods suggested that you should be seeing 130, one, well, about 130 brake. Let's not, let's not sugarcoat it. 130 brake. But it, it idled lumpy. Um, it started funny, obviously because of the cam. But on the gas, it used to go quite well. It used to go quite well. 
anyway i won't discuss too much the ins and outs of the rs turbo conversion because i want to save that for part two so you can discuss converting it etc etc well, oh, there's loads to go through on that anyway so um i think when i first had it it had a really quick cheap paint job because it didn't need lots it was in pretty good condition to be honest but it had stone chips and as you'd imagine had stone chips and little marks here and there so it had a cheap and cheerful paint job nothing too intensive or groundbreaking that was its first paint job as the story goes on you will discover that it's had paint more than once anyway so i was uh, driving it to work every single day I'm just gonna bonnet up I was driving it to work every single day from Clacton to, let's get the boot open. That's done, that still works. Yeah, I was driving it every single day from Clacton to Whittam, where I worked at the time. Did you see the mileage? It's just showing 49,759 miles. And I'll explain why that's so low in due course that'll be part two anyway so as i say i was driving it to whittam chelmsford every single day and she was just my little load lugger really and like i say it'd been fairly modified and um i was just enjoying it probably washing it twice a week oh it had specs in uh suspension as well specs lowering kit oh that's probably one of the worst mods i've ever done to it rock hard not very compliant not enormously comfortable oh and it was running 15 inch evo ones which i really liked the original flat fronted 15s and uh, they were good i've only just recently taken off the big wheels and gone back to standard and as i'm getting older i fully appreciate that the ride comfort on these in comparison to the 15s that i used to have is significantly better anyway so it's now running on coney sport adjustable suspension which is a fabulous and i wish i had i wish i could get another set just driving the garage ready to go because they're superb but really i want to go back to standard ride height that would be my next favored mini mod back to standard ride height anyway as you can see the paint's all right the paint's all right stood up quite well it's going to be needing this repaired again soon and it's starting to go around here boots gone that needs to be done and this arch is starting to go this panel's all right it's starting to go around the sunroof and around the window and I believe I have seen some bubbling around the skull but nothing terrible interior wise really really good again being from Claxton one day someone come around and asked me if they wanted some Recaros out of a crash damaged nearly new RS Turbo and they've always been covered up I'll show you them in the next video but they're in lovely condition. And that was front seats, back seats, door cards, of which this one's got the baggy problem, which I will pull my finger out one day and resolve. And this door card, obviously, I managed to source a gear knob at some point, can't really remember when, and I sourced a steering wheel. It doesn't have flip back opening rear quarter light windows. I've never been too worried about that, to be honest, because it's just another security concern in my opinion but there you go anyway so underneath currently bay is looking like this 
pretty tidy, pretty tidy. I mean, the things that people tend to replace. I've just recently got this about a year ago at eye-wateringly expensive money for the box at the housing, airfield housing, and this pipe. Uh, Magcore HT leads recently went on. It's not long had a new battery. All the cooling fan controls have been upgraded, and that's a, I think it's a company called MDS. They do a CVH up graded fan loom control kit so it's had that that's original everything else original original jack etc etc obviously the aficionados will note that this is a wholly inappropriate exhaust for this uh, sorry not exhaust spoiler for this particular car but hey at least it wears the correct RS livery. And this was a genuine item. I'd seen it on a I'd seen it on a Mark 3.5 Fiesta and really wanted one. So I got one. Anyway, to make sure the boot doesn't hit me on the head. <coughs> nice. Nice and enormous knot. So the boot's tiny. Obviously there's a fire extinguisher clean equipment, toolkit, spare cam, old brakes, and a massive sub, which incidentally hasn't been wired up for ages, because I always enjoyed just listening to the engine, to be honest. Lets you know everything's working right, and at the end of the day, you don't have a Ford RS and not want to listen to it. And yes, I know, I think these are from a Focus, these are newer spec Ford badges. But some, some things that you mod, I've wanted to put right or back to standard. Clear indicators, also wrong. Clear corners, also wrong. I've got genuine ones and I've still got the original yellow ones. But some things that you mod, you wanna, they're part of the decisions you made when you were a teenager or in your mid twenties. Just reading my notes. So that's covered everything. Oh, obviously there's the JBL sub, which we just looked at. I put in a Clifford stereo, uh, sorry, Pioneer stereo, which I still love. It still works fine. I always keep Dre 2001 in the car for prosperity, because that would be something that I would have played a lot. As a boost gauge up top, and obviously, <laughs> Again, a fashionable item when on the scene, the Clifford Concept, I think this is a Concept 40X, here we are, I knew I wasn't lying, check it out. <laughs> Just so many good memories, so many good memories. And funnily enough, I listened to that with my daughter, not on CD, but I listened to that with my daughter all the time. It's on my MP3 library. Back's in nice condition, the seats are in nice condition. We're just getting to the point where they're starting to get a little bit of sag, um, but that'll be easy fix, you know. That'll be an easy fix. All the materials there, the cloth's okay. It had a new roof lining, but the person that fitted it was utter, not very careful, not very careful. So there's little section sections where there's glue. Anyway, as I say, that is, as DJ Shadow would say, on ultra introduction. I believe that's correct in saying that. <laughs> oh no, should be a small introduction. Anyhow, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Oh, bonnet's in nice nick. Bonnet's in nice nick. This was brand spanking new. And as you'd imagine, apart from the hinges, the bonnet is in nice shape. Bonnets were new, louvres were new. Oh, and I also fitted that Kenlo fan. But that's probably more appropriate to discuss when we start looking at when I start talking through the 
RS turbo conversion. Okay, let's just pop that on its stand for a minute. I don't shut the door because Fiesta's are renowned for having that issue where one central locking sender will send an alternative signal to the other one and then they start pulsing. I've changed them more times than I care to discuss. But I only live down the road, but for my own safety, I'm just gonna leave the door on the latch. And, oh, she covers, I'd say for the last 20 years she has averaged 100 miles a year I'd say I can go back through the MOTs I mean MOT history some years 10 miles MOT station back other years 200 miles I have been to a car show in it last year I believe um, but I'd say we've probably averaged it's probably done a couple of thousand miles let's say to be certain in the last 15 years i'd say it's covered 2000 miles it spent 10 years or 15 years in a garage and currently because i don't have access to a garage it's stored outside under a halfords all weather all seasons cover and it's had four years outside now maybe five years outside i guess and what it did have a little period in my mum's workshop um, but yeah, it's, it's doing all right. And the good thing is having it next near me, I get to run it more. And if anything is making the car suffer, it's lack of use. It is lack of use. Now you can hear the classic tap it, but it sounds all right. And as I say, in the series, I'll discuss some of the little, some of the little foibles that I've been experiencing recently some of the small problems I've had with her, just niggly things really, because she's getting old, you know, like putting the airbox back to standard, upset the manifold and gaskets and other bits and bobs like that. And so it's running probably, and this is why it hasn't been on the channel, it's running probably 98% perfect. I know I'm missing this, but I do have my grill from the XR2i somewhere, but with these, you, I just always wanted to increase or encourage more airflow. <coughs> Excuse me. But yes, I'd say, you know, it's running about 98% perfect. Not making any untoward noise. Not making any untoward rattles. There's no concerns. I haven't done as much work on it as I'd like to have done this year. And it certainly hasn't done the mileage that I would have liked it to have done this year. I know this is out of spec as well. But I always liked them. So much neater than the Mark III ones. Um, yeah, I, I did want to get a lot more done to it this year, but as will transpire in some more videos that I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna open the other one, so it looks perfect from that side. As will transpire in some more videos I'm gonna shoot, there have been some other issues that have been needed to be resolved. And yes, it needs bodywork. That will be soon. But um, at the moment, she's looking nice. Looking nice. I mean, they're not long back from being refurbed. So they look good. Body gets in nice shape. Need to tweak that one. All new arch liners. Could do a bit of cleaning there. Oh, and just for the record, I haven't cleaned the car. I put a little bit of wax on it every now and again, just so that the car cover doesn't damage it. So that the paint works nice and slippery. Got a nice shine about it. But other than that, I can't remember the last time I absolutely drenched the car and washed it. Probably last year, I think I took it to 
the red bus stop meet last year because it hasn't been running perfect it hasn't been this year which is a shame anyway there's going to be loads coming about this hopefully we'll get a few more dry sunny bright days and and get her out some more we'll do a full chat about the rs turbo conversion how that went challenges i faced etc etc and bring it up to we'll have a look at what the spec is like now and then moving forward from there we can do a little bit of pov a little bit of driving when my daughter's with me for the weekend i'll get her to get loads of shots for me and i know i've got mot in about a month so there's no way i can squirrel away squirrel her away and just not use her she's got to be used she's got to go out on the road i just hope and pray she doesn't get wet anyway anyway that's enough of that that was far longer than i'm in i'm just going to try and keep these to little 15 minute um comfortable short easily digestible 15 minute videos and i'm thinking there's going to be about six but you know what i'm like i do love a good waffle and there's every likelihood that i will accidentally give away part of the not the car part of the uh, next episode by accident or there'll be some overlapping as i say i do like a waffle anyway that is it for this one i'm just gonna let these dog walkers go by where can i be where there yeah, i'm not in the sun i'm aware that i've walked around all the time <laughs> oh i meant to say something funny look i wore some period correct trainers <laughs> put them on specially thought they'd make me feel good make me feel nostalgic some air max 90s these are reissues but anyway hey ho hey ho sun no sun sun there that'll do it that'll do it anyway that's it for this one thank you oh sorry about that thank you very very much for watching thanks very much for all your support and if you're enjoying the content please consider hitting that like button hit that subscribe button and if you'd like to get notifications when i post up new content of which there is loads to come hit that bell button and you'll get notifications when i post up new content and if you're this way that way inclined and you're enjoying it recommend it to a friend really pushing to get up to that thousand subscribers mark so we can grow the channel get more products review more products maybe even start a project who knows just don't tell the missus <laughs> anyway great to see you all as always take care see you again soon bye bye